Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of The Open Pulpit. The discussion today is going to be based on what I'm sure you're going to find interesting. And what is it? I tell you, when I got to America first a long time ago, the first thing I saw as an amazement was that everywhere there is food. Food for this corner, food for this corner, food everywhere. And this food is like a peccary to you. Come, eat me. Come on, eat me. And I discovered that hmm, man shall not live by bread alone. No. So how do we eat right? I have my guests here who are prepared to be able to show us the way to eat healthy. I'm going to ask my sister and then let's introduce herself first. Maybe. Yes, thank you, Pastor. Hi, my name is Sharon Pahe. Um, I'm a laboratory scientist by profession, but I am a healthy cooking coach for Trinity for Health. Amen. Healthy cooking coach for what? For Trinity for Health. Oh, wow. So you coach people on how to eat healthy or how to cook healthy? Yes, we educate people on how to prepare food using the right tools and the right technique. Thank you so much. My sister, please. Um, my name is Ade Dolapoye Kiri. I'm a social worker by profession, and I'm also a healthy cooking coach with Trinity for Health. Wow. What does social worker, what do you do, social workers? Um, for me, my type of social worker is a children's social worker. I work for Child Protective Services and I'm an, I'm an emergency response social worker, meaning that I go out on investigations and um, leave the rest to you know my co-workers to do with the case management. But I'm a first responder when it comes to Child Protective Services. Child Protective Services. I think we're going to do another episode on that later. But let's put our mind on food. What kind of food do you consider dangerous for human consumption? Um, food mostly that is high in fat because fat contents usually, they become saturated fat in our bodies and our bodies usually do not digest fat too well. So it is very hard on our system. So mm. those usually cause uh, a lot of different diseases, most especially if we do not prepare it correctly and if we can eliminate fat from our diet, it's the most ideal. Wow. I, I think, talking from a layman's point of view, is fat not present in every food? Give examples of the kind of food we are talking about that contains too much fat that's not good for human consumption. Um, normally, yes, it is correct. Fat is contained in our food. Um, however, our exposure to fat is the one that is mostly dangerous in our bodies. If we can eliminate fat and not put it in our system, then that would be more ideal. So uh, the more that we can eliminate it, the more that we can refrain from it or remove it in our diet, then that would be better for our systems. Oh, I see. Hmm. Somebody told me, I'm not too sure whether it's right or wrong, that you should avoid using too much oil, vegetable oil, like that in cooking. How is that to be? I grew up to watch my mother cook with palm oil in Africa. And then when we got much more civilized, so to say, or westernized, then there's a vegetable oil in that. To what extent does vegetable oil and all these things affect the, the quality of food that we eat. Yes, um, so I mean, there's different kinds of oil and different kinds of preparation. Oils also have a different, uh, like the different heating point. Mm -hmm. So the more higher that the heating point is for an oil, um, it would be more ideal for us to cook with. Example would be avocado oil or coconut oil. Um, those are a little bit of a healthier version of the oil. So the more that we expose our bodies in those types of oil, a little bit healthier version, but typically, ideally, if we can refrain from that, mm -hmm. if we can remove that mm -hmm. in our food preparation, then it would be more ideal. Fantastic. 
Thank you so much. So now for them to come to you. You are looking very healthy. God is God. What kind of food do you think are healthy for human consumption? Um, we're going to talk about um, plant-based food. Plant-based food. Yes, and um, plant, yeah, mostly plant-based food, you know, is, you know, healthy. And um, just going back to, you know, the beginning of time where um, God created everything for human consumption, in our organization, we do believe that um, you can actually heal your body with, you know, with food. Hmm. A lot of people have done it. We've seen results. I am a living testimony of healing my body just with food. And with so I was prophetic when I said you are looking healthy. Okay, that's that's interesting. But can we give some examples of what you consider uh, the kind of food you are talking about? Um, lots of fruit, fruits and veggies, and then um, we can also talk about. Um, just you know, mainly fruits and veggies. You know, you can eat fruits a lot. Veggies. You can eat a, um so like a lot of people still eat chicken. You know, well, um, plant based in the sense that you know a lot of people derive a lot from plants. You know, it doesn't mean that we can't eat other animals too. Mm. Because when we go out to do our cooking shows, we still make chicken, which is you know a very good source of protein. But um, if you're able to, it's not everybody that would go ahead and do plant based stuff. But um, a lot of you know. We do recommend plant-based, but not everybody is exclusively plant-based. Wow, a lot of people still add, you know, protein source from different other places. But um, it's just mainly how you cook your food is what's going to make a difference. It's going to make a lot of difference. The way you cook your food, we will come to that. We are looking very healthy too. Thank you, Pastor. And I think I'm looking healthy oh. too. <laughs> now the question is this. And I want us to go straight to the point. What kind of food in particular, or which kind of food in particular, do you never recommend for people, apart from the oil age they're talking about? Because growing up, we hear so many things. Some people say that if you eat too much red meat, it's not good. Yeah. If you eat too much, white meat is not good so what meat is good um actually food is healthy by itself mm. um, so everything in moderation is always recommended it's how we prepare our food is what we want to make sure that you know it makes it healthier um, food itself has natural flavors it has the nutrition it has the vitamins but how we prepare it, it makes a big difference. You seem to be very particular on how we prepare food. How do we prepare food that we make it healthy? Um, we want to prepare our food using, um, of course, uh, a healthier way, a healthier method. And we want to prepare food that we're able to maximize the nutrition and flavor of it. Okay. What we want to do is we want to eliminate five enemies of nutrition to make our food healthier. Wait a minute. Guys, I think you better take a pen and paper and listen to what she's saying here. There are five, what do you call this? Five enemies of nutrition. Five enemies, so that when you are praying, <laughs> you know what you are praying about, you know what to consume, because people may be praying against an unseen enemy, whereas you may be consuming enemies in your, to your body system. Yeah. Please go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, so we want to eliminate the five enemies of nutrition. The first enemy of nutrition is peeling. Peeling? Yes. Peeling? Please go ahead. What do you mean by peeling? Yeah, so uh, peeling is considered an enemy of nutrition because, and this applies to vegetables, uh, peeling, the peel itself of our fruits and some vegetables, of some fruits and vegetables, they actually have the most nutrients most especially the vegetables that are close to the ground, mm -hmm. right? Potatoes, carrots, they, uh, we tend to peel them because we are creatures of habit. Creatures of habit. Yes. So we should correct. peel them. Yes, it is not recommended for us to peel it. Of course, we have to um, clean them in a way that removes all of you know those impurities of all of uh, the impurities from the ground 
by actually not peeling them, not only are we saving time, mm. right? And we're actually saving more. We're putting more food in our plates because we're not peeling it, at least 25% of it. And we actually have most of the nutrients on the peel itself of the vegetables. So, so that is why we consider peeling an enemy of nutrition. You said five. Yes. What's number two enemy? Number two enemy of nutrition, and this also pertains for vegetables, is cooking in water. Cooking, cooking in water is an enemy of nutrition because most of our fruits and vegetables are actually water soluble. Okay, so if we're exposing it to water, most especially with high heat, then we're exposing it to the second enemy of nutrition. Um, most example... Let me interrupt you briefly. Sure. I'm thinking seriously, what kind of food can we cook without water? Is vegetables, that... we can actually cook vegetables without water if we actually are steaming it at ideal, typical temperature. Okay, food varies from one culture to another culture. Correct. Where I come from, yam is the most staple food that we love so much. How do I cook yam without water? Please. Let me hear. You want to take that? that um, you can actually cook, and that's where the um, uniqueness of what we do comes in, mm -hmm. in the sense that all these things we're talking about, um, you're not able to get the maximum, um, the, the maximum result or result at all from just any type of cookware. So mm -hmm. um, the cookware, I mean, what, what we cook in and what we, what we recommend, because there's, there's a lot of cookware out there and there's a lot of toxic um, cookware out there that is killing people and people don't know that, you know, when they cook their food, it's reacting with a lot of chemicals. So now talking about the yam that you talked about, I have cooked yam in the cookware that I have without water and it has turned out the same way, you know, wow. we eat it back home. Wow. But um, I, could, I wouldn't have tried it with any other form of um, cookware that would actually, you know, um, mix chemicals with my food and does not do the right heating, like um, the, the right heating with um, the whole pot. Um, <clears throat> the cookware that I'm talking about, it heats, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Everything is uniform. When it heats, it doesn't mm -hmm. overheat and it, and it distributes the heat around the cookware as opposed to what I was using, you know, years ago and before, you know, I actually came into this healthy cooking, um, a healthy cooking realization, um, it wouldn't have done, you know, the job with the yam that you talked about. And I have made a lot of, you know, food, local food with um, the new cookware that I have now. So and cookware is uh, it's an instrument of cooking or what? It is. Okay. Because there are different types of cookware. Okay. And we'll, that's we'll, what, you we'll know, the... That. You said you will come to that? I said we will come to that okay. if I come to, we are going to talk more about cookware. Now, you started by telling us the enemies of yeah. nutrition. nutrition. The first one, peeling. Second one, cooking with water. Yes. What's the third one? The third one is actually oxidation. Oxidation. What is oxidation? Oxidation is when you let light and air inside the food that you are cooking. So it's almost like when you bite into an apple, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So when you bite into an apple or you cut into a potato, what happens like after a few seconds? Tell me what happens. It, it turns brown, right? Okay. It turns brown. Yeah. So that is the process of oxidation, is when mm. you let light and air react with the food that you're cooking. So the food that enters it results in oxidation, right? That is correct. So how do we take care of that when cooking? So we want to prevent oxidation when you're preparing your food by not keeping an opening opening and closing wow. your lid whenever you're cooking and also you know if you've got glass lids on your cookware mm -hmm. then you're exposing it to light wow correct well yes. i thought it's the level of certification to have cookware that have transparent covers really good. yes wow this is this is powerful revelation okay how about number four number four enemy of nutrition is when you're cooking in high heat so cooking in high heat, most especially when you're boiling, when you're steaming, and also when you're microwaving your food. So that's exposing it to high heat. So how do we define high heat? We define high heat as something that is exposed to over 200 degrees. Well, we don't have temperature to measure these things. We just put something in the, in the 
That is correct. Microwave, we turn it on. And how do we regulate the temperature? Yes. As we so, do that. so how do we do that? Um, with our cooking technology and our cooking method, we want to uh, ex um, not expose our food to over 200 degrees. So we do have what we call a vapor valve, which is patented to our company. Okay. So it is patented to, ca it's calibrated to activate once the temperature inside your food reaches 187 degrees. Mm. So 187 degrees, it clicks, and that's when you turn down your temperature to low heat. Wow. I think we are changing many people's kitchen the way you are talking. Absolutely. You have to begin to buy different things. Well, okay. So that's your number four enemy. Yes. What's the number five enemy? Number five enemy of nutrition is fats and oils, which is what we had originally had talked about earlier. Exposing your food, uh, exposing your body to fats and oils actually is the number one cause of heart disease. Mm. So, yes, uh, saturated uh, fat is the one that clogs our arteries. Of course, when we are first born, our arteries are very clear, right? But as we expose to our lifestyle here, most especially when you um, have fast food and we um, expose ourselves to, you know, fried food, so the fats and oils become saturated and that's what clogs our arteries. And then if our arteries are clogged, then it's harder for our hearts to pump blood in our vessels. Thank you so much. Those are the five enemies. Yes, I five think enemies. I, I think I want to add my own enemy, yes. number six. We are ourselves. Are we not enemies? Because we eat. many of us eat indiscriminately. Absolutely. Many of us, we eat for the, for the, for the, for the fun of eating. So to say, the, the yes. fact that the, the, this food is available does not mean you should eat it. I've got to practice before when I see people load their plates mm. with something you never think they can finish. And I do see them finish it. Mm. You know, um, one of the brothers, a friend of mine said something a long time ago. She said that um, when you eat too much, then you go to the toilet too often. Correct. How is it correct? Please explain that to me. And I, I, it makes sense to me in the sense that once the body finishes using what it can use, the what you are eating, mm -hmm. the rest goes to waste. How can we control what we eat? How does somebody more or less regulate what he eats so much so that he will balance his eating and then he's going to the next most of the time? What advice do you have for such a person? Well, everything that is in moderation, it's always recommended, you know, um, everything that we intake in our bodies is more of moderation. Mm. So um, what they always recommend is when you're 80% full, then you need to stop eating, right? When you're 80% full and not 100% But 80% is relative. I don't somebody know this 80%. Do you know when you are 80% full? Um, yeah, absolutely. I guess, you know, where that came from is, you know, you, we all know when we've reached our limit and when we're pushing over just to expand, oh, see. you know, and then, you know, just to answer your question, wisdom is, you know, very, very profitable. And this is where I link it back to the scriptures, because our bodies are the temple of the almighty God, of the spirit, the spirit dwells in here. And um, <clears throat> there's a threshold of health and wealth that we need to maintain as God's creature to have to, to continue to have the spirit dwell in this body. Brother Paul, you are preaching now. <laughs> Before we get to the preaching point, you guys mentioned your company, your organization. Do you have a company and organization that uh, helps in teaching people this thing we're talking about? Yes. Um, so we are representatives from Trinity for Health. Is that the logo you Trinity, have? Trinity, yes. Yeah. Trinity, Trinity for Health. For health. Yes. You didn't give me a t shirt also. I would have bought Trinity for Health. We can do that name. next time. Okay, all right. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so um, our company is um, the Holy Trinity. Uh, we are God focused, Christ centered. We're clothed by Wait the Holy Spirit. You are Russian. You are Russian. Let's take it one step so that everybody at work can get what we're talking about. Tell me again about the Holy Trinity you know, company that specializes in how to cook food. We are what? We are God-focused. God-focused to? Yes. 
we are um, Christ-centered. Christ-centered? Yes. Three. Clothed with the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. Then us. Did it all to the Lord was summoned now. And then I think the Bible says something that's very profound. Man shall not live by bread anymore. Correct. How does this apply to your food that you cook? Yes, yeah, so um, man cannot live by bread alone. And also what we want to uh, focus on is uh, the trinity of healthy meals and the four pillars of health. Wow, thank you. So that's what you started talking, you said that, um, that the body of the human being is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. This food we eat feeds our flesh. It feeds the flesh. How do we feed the Holy Spirit that has to dwell inside our flesh? Okay, we feed the Holy Spirit like we all know as Christians with the Word of God. But particularly, I want to focus on the abuse that we do as human beings to our bodies. Mm. Just like you said, you go to parties, you see how people pack food. If they ate half of what you saw, they will still be okay. But sometimes, you know, one needs to, we need to train our minds. That's why I said wisdom is no more profitable. You know, we need to apply wisdom and train our minds and eat, you and know, be disciplined. and be disciplined and not be and, greedy, and not be greedy mm. because we cannot continue to abuse this body and expect it to continue to function the way we want it to function. And that's why I said that, you know, when you understand spiritual principles, you will know that there's a threshold of health and wealth that we need to maintain in this model body for our spirits to continue to dwell in the body. When we abuse this body to a certain level and degeneration happens, the, the spirit, your spirit does not have any choice but to leave the body. Wow. And that's when you talk about death. Oh, wow. So we need to I, I think care of... before we begin to frighten people <laughs> when we talk about death, let's do something that's very uh, important here. And what is that thing? Are there food that go against Christian doctrine or Christian belief. Because some people say, because I'm so so, I don't eat pork. Because I'm so so, I don't eat turkey. Because is there is food linked to the spiritual development in any way? We actually don't preach, you know, a particular food for people not to eat. We just focus on, just like Sharon explained earlier, we focus on eating in moderation and learning how to cook your food, avoiding all the five enemies of nutrition and cooking in, uh, in, a way, uh, um, in a way that, you know, you're not cooking in whatever cookware that is leaching um, chemicals into your food. And those, that's what we focus on, eating, you know, um, mod in moderation, eating in moderation, um, not, you know, cooking in, you know, um, what's it called, um, chemical leaching where, uh, cookware, and, um, just we do not preach on a particular food in Thank our organization. So no, because, we don't. because the Bible says that every living thing, including herbs, the Lord has given us to eat. So it's, it's not a matter of your choice, right? Not a matter of choice. This is really, really very fascinating. One or two questions and we wrap up. Are there hours of the day when people should eat? Because I had somewhere that uh, breakfast is a must. I don't know if that's true, but I'm not a breakfast person. Now, I also had some people say you cannot eat when it is 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. or 6 p.m., etc. Right? People say that if you eat too late and you sleep immediately before that said digestion, then you can have many less dreams. What do you say to that? And with that, I think it has a lot to do with digestion. Mm -hmm. And that is just, you know, a general thing across the body, the way your food, the body digests food. Um, it is not recommended. I mean, it doesn't just have to come from our organization. It's just, you know, thing that everybody, most, you know, healthy, um, most healthy conscious people know, and they preach to that, you know, you can't finish your food and just go lay down immediately. It is, um, it is unhealthy because you need to, this, the digestion has to happen for every human being. You know, for people, some people say one hour, some people say two hours, but your body knows exactly when your food has actually gone down and digested. Otherwise, a lot of people know that, you know, you eat and you sleep immediately, the food stays up on your, um, in your chest and it doesn't digest properly. So that is just, you know, a general thing. It's not just from our organization. 
no, it's a general I, thing. General thing, okay. I, I, what, I, I'm not talking about salvation now, I'm just talking generally also. Okay, let's go back to something that is more modern that we see. This thing called microwave. Mm. Now, I've heard also that there should be certain kinds of containers you use and cover when you put your food inside the microwave. What advice do you have for our viewers in that regard? Um, actually, uh, microwave is really not recommended for anything because we all know that microwave emits radiation. Ah. Wait, so this is going to cost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use microwave almost every day in my life, in my house, in my. What are we going to do? What is your alternative? What are the options? That um, also goes to being creatures of habit, right? So if you have an option not to use the microwave and be able to prepare or warm up your food in a non leaching, okay. A non leaching cookware or a non-leaching container that is the most ideal because it's how we prepare our food it affects the nutrition nutrition value of, of our, it okay yes. mm. oh, okay those of us who are already addicted to microwave when we try and stop well it's possible to stop but if we continue to use microwave what kind of cover or container do you recommend because I use this transparent silicon kind of thing, you know. Is, it, is that healthy? Does it do any damage to the contents of the food? Uh, Ada, you want to take that? Okay, um, for me, like I said, you know, um, like Sharon rightly said, you know, that's, that's a lot of heat. And that's one enemy of nutrition with the microwave. Wow. It's a lot. Anything that is cooking your food above 187 degrees, is considered not good for you so i don't think covering it with any particular kind of covering will take it and bring it down to 187 because i think microwave goes up to about 4000 yeah so that that is really high to be you know um giving your food under that kind of high heat you know it's an enemy of nutrition everything that you consider nutrient in your food is out of the window and um, it doesn't matter what you cover it with, it's not going to bring it down to 187 wow. where your food is safe and the nutrition is on the nutrients are preserved in your food. Thank you so much. From the discussion so far, uh, viewers, you will see that there are many things we have to unlearn about eating uh, properly and eating very well. So as we wrap up, I want to start with you. What advice, general advice do you have for our viewers at home concerning food and nutrition? Um, my advice to um, the viewers at home is we need to um, start thinking, start making conscious decisions about the things we put in our bodies. Um, I know that you know fast food is readily available for most of us because of the kind of job we do, we're busy people. But um, if we try a little bit harder, we can, we can actually you know, um, eat healthier. Healthier and make a conscious decision like I'm not just going to pack, you know, whatever it is into my body or whatever. And we know a lot of people who eat fast food all the time, they know, but they just tell themselves, you know, I don't have a choice, I don't have a choice. Imagine day in, day out, week in, week out, month, month in, month out, and year in, year out, you know, we continue with the same habit. You know, imagine what's going to happen to our health. So we need to, my advice is let's start making conscious decisions about what we put in our bodies, more fruits and veggies. And more if you have taken anything away from today's um, discussion, you know, try to avoid all the enemies of um, nutrition. We need to stop peeling our um, veggies. And um, so, yeah, we need to stop peeling our veggies because most people, that's what we do. And that's where most of the nutrients what? of our fruit lies on the skin of thank, the fruits. Thank you. I will still peel yam. Right? I shouldn't peel yam. That, that's, a, that's a different one. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Your final words for people. Yes, uh, so to conclude, I'm going to quote the father of modern medicine, that just Hippocrates always said that, let your food be your medicine. Mm. But at the same time, we also have a contradictory to that. Your food can be your medicine, but at the same time, let food your food be medicine. your medicine, your medicine. not your poison. Yes, Please go ahead. absolutely. And food can also be poison to our bodies. So your choice is going to be clear. It's actually how you prepare your food 
that can affect how you look, how you feel, and how long you live. So the choice is ours. So make a conscious decision is what Adi had mentioned. And we actually, that's what we do at Trinity for Health. We teach people how to prepare your food using the right tools and the right techniques. Thank you so much, viewers. I think we'll be blessed today. One or two things I can only add. Number one, discipline. Number two, absence of greed. The fact that every food is available does not mean that you must consume it. The fact that you go for a buffet at a party and all things are laid out does not mean you should eat selectively. That's very important to remain very healthy. And we've heard just now that our temple, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, let's run from things that can kill us. Let's run away from fats, eh, obesity, and all those things that are dangerous to our health. So, at this point, I think the world is not wise. So, thank you for your attention. This has blessed you. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed.